Welcome back guys on my YouTube channel for another episode of my Dakar 2021 web series. In this episode, I'm gonna tell you what techniques I use in order to get some training on roadbooks. As this year, due to coronavirus, no rallies are still happening until this day. There is one way we can train and start training for digital roadbooks because it's almost time that Dakar will switch not in 2021 but in 2022 to fully digital roadbooks. Obviously this will make it much easier for organizations to monitor and to provide the roadbooks just minutes before the start. It will be easier for the organizers to apply any modifications so we won't have to cut and paste anything at night and we can sleep uh, sweet nights. To start with, if you want to get some roadbook training and starting to really understand what all the symbols mean for international rallies and Dakar, a good way is to is if you have any friend that takes part in a rally, you can ask them if they can give you their used roadbook. This is the roadbook from Qatar rally where I raced in the SSV category. That's why it's made like a booklet and not like a roll that we place here on the bike. But this is always a good way to start understanding roadbook because you'll go through the notes and try and see what are the trickiest notes, why certain colors were used in certain sections and you start to get a hand. But obviously this is not such a great training. It won't make your navigation a lot better, but at least you will know what the symbols mean. But I'm gonna make your life a lot easier because there's really a cool app that you can use, which I will show you today. And not only I'll show you the app, but I'll show you how you can train sitting on your sofa your navigation skills and start learning how to properly find the route when you're racing Dakar. To start with, you'll need an Android device. It can be a tablet, but even your smartphone. And I find it really useful. You install this application on your smartphone so you can access it even when you're in the Dakar Bivouac. The application is called Dakar 18 Roadbook Viewer. Once we've opened the Dakar 18 Roadbook Viewer, we will have three places we can select. We can select either Dakar 18, Desafio Inca, or Desafio Ruta 40. These are two other rallies. I'll click on Dakar and then I will go and hit stages. Here we will have 14 stages of the Dakar 18. So Argentina, Bolivia and Peru. I'll just hit a random stage, stage four. Here we have some details on the stage and then we click open roadbook. Once we've opened the roadbook, here we will be able to scroll and see all the notes. If we hit highlight notes, it will automatically highlight the notes for us. In this way, we can start looking at the various roadbook notes. But if we want to know what each note is telling us, understand the language and exactly what they want to tell us, we'll keep pressed on the note and underneath we'll have the exact description of what this note is telling us. In this case, three kilometers, continue on track, 500, danger two, prepare to go off track, and then turn to cap 297, attention, ondulation, danger two, off track. So a lot is being said on this note, and through the roadbook viewer, we will manage to really have a description for every note we are gonna look at. But if we hit info, here we have all the symbols. And this list, I find it super useful to have it always on your smartphone. For any rally you're gonna take part in, even minor rallies, this can come in very handy. Even though you have to keep in mind, these are the symbols used in Dakar and World FIM and FIA championship races. But now let's start with the fun part of training with digital roadbooks. Come with me in the other room and we'll start playing and training. Okay guys, I'm here in my rally simulator. I'm in my kitchen. Here I have the tablet on which I will have the digital roadbook that I showed you before. And I have with me the perfect simulator you can use for training. And now we'll look at it together and all its features. 
Dakar 18. This is the official video game of the Dakar Rally. Initially, I was very curious to try it, and once I tried it, I fell in love. I had lots of fun playing online also with friends. It's available for computers, for Xbox and for PlayStation. I'm currently gonna use the PlayStation version, and it's a perfect tool for roadbook navigation training, but not only, even to get used to the cap heading and get used to how to change cap heading. So as we'll see, you'll start to get a feel on how much you have to turn your bike when you're riding in order to change the variation in cap heading. But now let's get into it and I'll show you on the screen what I'm seeing and we'll start playing the Dakar game. Now I'm in the main menu and we can select Adventure, Multiplayer, Explore, Ranking Options. We'll directly go into a new game. We'll choose, I'll choose obviously Motorbike. I'll continue anyway. You know what, I'll choose which brand, Yamaha. And I'll go with my friend Rod with which I raced in Australia some years ago and with which I also raced Dakar. Don't play rookie. If you get this game, I don't want to see you play rookie because it's too easy. At least competitor. To play legend, which is the best training, you'll need to unlock it. So we'll select competitor. We continue anyway. In career settings, I'll just leave everything as it is. We start from the first stage, it's the prologue. We have 35 kilometers stage, sandy and nice weather. I'll open my tablet, go into the roadbook viewer and choose stage one, open roadbook. I'll highlight the notes. Meanwhile, it's loading. We can check out the roadbook either on the screen or we can check it here on our tablet. We can see the waypoint list and how much penalty we get if we miss a waypoint and we are maximum allowed to miss one waypoint. We can see the map, the bike uh, is all fine, everything 100%. Time to start, ready to race. Stage one, we are getting at the start of the first stage. We're gonna be on dunes for the whole prologue and checking here the roadbook on the roadbook viewer. We'll start with cap heading one degree. Now five seconds to the start, we change view, we have to put the roadbook view. Okay, we start and we have to go one degree. Up on top you can see we have the cap heading and at 700 meters we have a double danger which is gonna be this dune, a small jump. 1.03 kilometers, we have to change cap heading 279. Okay, we had 279, move even the roadbook here. And at two kilometers we'll need to go cap heading 14 which means to the right, uphill. We validated the checkpoint, we still do at two, Okay, we change our cap heading to 14, and now we go towards the dunes. We'll try and keep an average of 14, and at 373, we'll have to change to 63 cap heading. Okay, let's start changing. Okay, to 63, until six kilometer 85. Quickly, let's stop so I can show you the dashboard. We have on top two speedo caps. The one on the left is our odometer. It's telling us how many kilometers we are at. And on the right, we have the cap heading. And also now that we are close to the waypoint, the waypoint has opened. So we have the open arrow to go towards it. At 685, we will go near those ruins and we'll have to change the cap heading to 78. This also when you're racing Dakar is very important. All these references that you may find in a road book really help you, especially when you get lost. Now let's change to 78 cap heading and we go across these big dunes and we have a triple danger. Obviously in the video game we can jump and we won't get injured, but I'll show you how even a crash works. Now we'll crash.
and it's very funny that we'll have to walk our way back to the bike or if we want we can even just walk around and look at the nice scenery and the dunes let's let's ask him if he can stop for us and give us a spare part as he's a yamaha hey come here ah not a really good teammate he went on the throttle seeing me i had just crashed we get back on the bike and we are ready to go again now that we have that fence line this is a really good reference because we'll go around the whole fence now that we are around we go cap 69 and we try to catch up we have the open arrow now we go towards the waypoint ah oh, catch the waypoint now up heading is 78 funny thing is we even have some very soft sand section in this video game where we might get stuck i managed to get through it and now when i'm at 16.23 I validated the waypoint and I'll have to do a big switch to 172 degrees. This video game isn't so much a game you play to have fun and just, you know, drive a vehicle. This is a simulation to me. So I don't focus that much on the driving simulation factor. Oh, look here, those two palms. You can see them also in the roadbook and there is a double danger and we'll have to go up the dune. Oh, I almost missed the waypoint. Where is it? Waypoint validated. Cap heading 251. This game is just really good training for you in order to get a hand on your roadbook skills and really to understand how much you have to turn your bike when you change cap heading. And I'm using it, especially during quarantine, even to have fun with friends. Other waypoint is opening. He even catched up another rider. Who is it? Another teammate. And here, cap 240. Big jump. Wish I could jump like that in reality and have nothing happen. This game is an open world game, which means that if we get lost, we'll have to find ourselves the way back. And we might end up riding for a long, long time. 163. I I think I see the finish of the prologue. We are in third position. We validated the waypoint now 292. Big switch until 33.68. We're gonna overtake with a uh, Honda factory rider. Now 184 and we should see the finish. There it is. stage completed. In case it's the first time you play this game, I recommend that you play the Desafio Ruta 40, it's a DLC you can download because it's slightly easier as it's mainly piste, so tracks and not out in the desert like the Dakar Roadbook because it can be really challenging at the start. First few times I played, I got with my friends pretty lost and I'll quickly show you the start of the Desafio Ruta 40, which is main tracks and riverbeds, so it's a bit easier, but it will really give you the chance to see how realistic this game is in terms of roadbook navigation. Now we are in Argentina. We have 2.7 kilometers before we leave. I already went wrong. Look, I already went wrong and I'll show you how tricky this game is exactly how the Dakar navigation is. You see the first note where the start is, the zero, zero. You can see that I have to shift on a road that's on the right. I was going straight. Now I'll have to bring down the trip master, which I can do with the joystick. I'm bringing it back to, let's go to the start. In this way, I can show you what I mean, why this note is very tricky. Okay, we are at the start. We always think and underestimate that the start has to be straight. But in this case, we couldn't be more wrong. The start, instead of going on this main track, we have to leave on this small lure track and get back, oops, on this other track. And we have to go all the way to 2.7 kilometers and then we'll go on a main track to the right. Here, we are 
on that note. Now, two notes always straight where we keep the main track. Oh, and I have to shift again on another road. It's so easy to get lost and miss the road book. Something I do even when I'm uh, racing is if I go wrong in some place and I have no clue where I am, I'll go back to the point I was sure about. One thing that can happen in Dakar is like this. We have the arrow and the arrow is saying, go to the right. But the road book is showing us we are on a track. So in, you never have to uh, do the mistake, which here in the game you can do it. But in reality, you can't just follow the arrow or you'll end up to the waypoint and having no clue where you have to go. So we went around that small mountain, now riverbed and then to the right. Here we have no cap headings as we are on main tracks all the way to 11.5 where we will go near a fence here is the fence line can't really see it or is it i don't know it's a ditch not a fence okay all the way to 13. wait i'll also scroll it 13 i need to leave the main track after i cross the river bed to the right cap heading 38. Let's see where the riverbed is. This is the riverbed, dry riverbed we cross, and then we have to leave cap heading 38. Okay, so we are really off track. For how long? For 1.5 kilometers. Luckily, we have the arrow telling us, oh, validated the waypoint, and I need to go inside the riverbed cap heading 300. This place, one could maybe end up going to the right, but the logic is if I'm 15 cap heading, I'll have to turn to the left to go to 300. My teammate is overtaking me. Let's pass him again. Until 17.6, we have to turn in the Rio 205. In these Rios, it's not that important how precise your cap heading is, at least in tight re reels like this, because uh, you'll have to always follow the flow of the riverbed. One kilometer we keep here inside the riverbed and we need to go under a... Oh! You see, this happens also in reality. You look at the roadbook for that one second, the wrong one second, and you'll end up having a huge crash. Now I'll need to find even where my bike ended up. Bye, hey, stop to help me. Uh, let's see where Rodney left his bike. Where did I crash? On that rock. I think I have a concussion. That's why I have no idea where my bike is. I can feel Pablo Quintanilla catching up with me. I'm currently fourth position. Oh, there my bike. Yamaha looks nice. Let's see if I managed to convince Yamaha to give me one of these bikes for Dakar. I really would love to ride them. We're back on track. Let's look for the bridge. Where is the bridge? We have to go under. We're still not there. Here is the bridge. We go under the bridge and then we have a long note of 10 kilometers where we keep the riverbed. Okay guys, thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel, give it a like. I find this to be a super useful tool. If you're interested in playing with me, obviously in legend mode, you can search on the PlayStation Network for Manuel Lucchese. That's all for today and I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao!